Hi guys, today I have a haul for you. I feel like I haven't filmed a budget beauty haul in ages. I've been filming hauls for kind of clothing and other bits and pieces over on my other channel. By the way, I have just uploaded um, a higher end beauty haul if you're interested. I will link that below. Uh, but I feel like I haven't done a budget beauty haul in a while. And these are things that I've been collecting over the past few weeks because I've been popping into Boots or to Asda or wherever and getting little bits and pieces. I've not kind of had a big blowout in Boots recently. Um, but anyway, without further ado, I have a few base products to share first of all. Uh, the first thing is this Good Things Miracle Mattifier Moisturiser. Really enjoying this to wear under my makeup at the moment. Really, really inexpensive. I think it was about £5. Um, and you only need the tiniest amount. It really does go a long way given that it's a mattifier. I expected it to be really kind of almost sticky on my skin. But it really, really does blend out quite nicely. Um, and it definitely is helping control the oil underneath whatever foundation I wear. Um, I have tried a few different foundations this month um, and this Garnier BB Cream Pure Active, which is the newest one in this BB Cream line from Garnier, uh, is one of them. I really, really like this. It's not, it doesn't leave me oil free, but of the three it's definitely the best. Um, for kind of oilier girls, I would definitely recommend this one. The only kind of bugbear I have with it is the original formula was much too dark for me. The light one was much too dark for me. They then did the oil free, which I loved, but it was a little bit runny in consistency and the alcohol content definitely broke me out. As soon as you put it on, you can smell the alcohol. That's not ideal. Um, but the colour on that was brilliant. The light colour was absolutely perfect. And then this third one, the light colour is too dark again. So that's a little bit disappointing, but I will be busting this out if I get a little bit of colour or I'm wearing fake tan or something something like that in the summertime. Um, the next foundation product I picked up is this Bourjois Happy Light. And I've actually had this for a couple of months. I just don't think that I've mentioned it. Um, I only wore it a couple of times and then it went into my kind of to review um, box of goodies. And so I haven't actually done much with it and it is pretty new to me still. So I thought it was worth mentioning in this haul. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to try it a little bit more. Not gonna be great for oil control. Probably not gonna be one of the ones that I'm testing out for that. Um, but I do like a glowy foundation from time to time. And then the third and final foundation product that I've picked up, I just got this a couple of days ago, um, is the Maybelline Superstay 24. And lots of you have asked me to review the Better Skin version, but I've found that the products that are kind of geared towards clearing your skin generally kind of dry it out a little bit, which is not ideal, not what I'm really looking for. Although I am oily, I'm not really trying to combat any breakouts or any bad skin. I'm not having kind of any issues with that. It's just oil, so I'm not trying to look for something that's going to try and clear my skin up. I'm just looking for something that will wear for a long time and keep me as matte as possible. So this is the next one that I'm going to try. I do also have the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light now. I just picked that up the other day, mainly because so many people asked me whether or not Colour Stay from Revlon, which I absolutely love, is as good as the Estee Lauder Double Wear. And I've always said, oh, I'm not that bothered about the Estee Lauder because the Colour Stay does exactly what I want it to do when it's a fraction of the price. Um, but kind of got to the point where I thought, well, I am getting really oily now and I'm trying to use as many things as possible and try as many things as possible to see what the best thing out there is. So on the one hand, maybe I'll love it. And on the other hand, I can also really compare the two for you. For those of you that kind of want to save that money but really want to try the Estee Lauder, hopefully I can help you make that decision as to whether or not it's worth it. I have been using it for a few days, I'm kind of on the fence about it, it's not completely oil control, I was kind of disappointed because it's so expensive, I really really wanted it to keep me completely matte, it doesn't, but it does a pretty good job, so we shall see, I need to test it a little bit longer first, but I haven't used this yet and I'm keeping my fingers crossed, I will love that because it's considerably cheaper. Um, I got a couple of things from the new stuff from L'Oreal. Uh, I got one of their new confetti top coats. I loved the black and white one that they did and this looks so cool. I put it on over pink nails the other day and it looked like a sprinkle cupcake or a donut or something. Very, very cool and I think they do a greeny blue one as well. Um, and I got one of their new eyeshadows which is, I think they're two different names. This is the Lumiere and they do another one as well. And this is kind of like a chromey, what are those MAC one called? Um, those MAC one's called something finish or mineralize something they look like those very very cool and this is kind of a taupey color and um, the shade is 502 um, caught talking of taupe i finally picked up the nyc um taupe brow slash eyeliner from oh, from nyc um i've been looking for it for the longest time and you guys have told me that i needed it and i'm sorry but i really really don't like it 
it's way too soft. I mean, the fact that it's a coal pencil and then it's a brow slash eyeliner hybrid really should have tipped me off. I should have known that I wasn't going to love it because what I'm looking for in a coal eyeliner, it to be soft and smudgy and kind of creamy to use, is definitely not what I'm looking for a brow pencil. I'm looking for it to be kind of firmer, not waxy at all. I like it to be drier in formula because I don't like my, my eyebrows to stick together. It's like what I look for in the two products couldn't be more different and so I should have known I wasn't going to like it as a brow product. But I do like it as an eyeliner and it was only £1.50 so it's not a total waste. Um, I also picked up two other eyeliners, both from Maybelline. Um, first is the Master Drama Chromatics pencil in Turquoise Vibe. Um, really, really like this one. This is gorgeous. I've been wearing this a lot as like a pop of colour underneath my eyes. Um, as you can tell from my blue eyes today, I've been really enjoying kind of colourful makeup. I'm trying some new things out for kind of summer instead of just basic kind of very, very little on my eyes and a pop of colour on my lips. I've been trying some colourful eyes and I'm enjoying it. Um, but that's a gorgeous, gorgeous one. And I would probably hazard a guess that it would be nice smudged over the entire lid as well. And the other Maybelline eyeliner I have is the Lasting Drama in Black Shock and it's their gel liner that is supposedly exactly the same as the Benefit one, the Varial push-up liner. It has that strange kind of nib um, that the push-up one has. I'm very very excited to put these against or pit these against each other because I do have the uh, Benefit one and much as I like it, it does last a long time and it is really really easy to get the cat eye flick with that. I'm not super impressed with the application, I don't think it's as easy as they make it out to be. So. We'll see if they're anything like each other. I think this will definitely be uh, the winner of the two because I think they're gonna be the same. And then lastly, I think this is the last thing. Yeah, I have three lipsticks. One of them I'm wearing right now and it is Revlon's, which one is it? Pink Pout. I actually did some little bit of research on which lipsticks I should pick up because I've been looking for some drugstore lipsticks. Um, I've been picking up a lot of MAC ones recently. I've got a little bit of an obsession. Um, I'm kind of expanding on my collection and I like to see them all lined up. They're very, very pretty. Um, and that's kind of something that I take into consideration when I'm buying more lipsticks. How many of that brand I already have. And I know that sounds crazy, but I bought two Revlon and I'm kind of hoping that I can switch from MAC to Revlon now and just see the nice Revlon tubes stacking up because it would be a lot cheaper to do it that way. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying this one. I've only worn it today, I only bought it today, but it reminds me a lot of Please Me from MAC. It's kind of got a bit of a lavender tone to it. It's kind of a nice kind of light slash mid-tone pink with a lavendery tone to it and it's matte. Um, so it reminds me a lot of Please Me. And then I also have Pink in the Afternoon, which looks very pretty and I swatched actually there. And then the last one I got, I have um, already tried and taken some pictures of on my blog, not impressed at all. And it's the Collection 2000, what is this one called? Rose Petal. And it's supposed to be a moisturising lipstick, and I know it's only £1.99, but you know, I think it should either be good and they sell it for £1.99 or bad and they don't sell it at all. I don't think that the price should be um, kind of a deciding factor as to whether or not it's going to be a good product. I think that it should either be good or bad but it should have nothing to do with how much you paid for it. Um, because, you know, I know it's £1.99 but that's not an excuse for the fact that I find it to be completely rubbish. Let me know if you disagree because it might just be me but I found it to be really, really streaky and patchy and difficult um, to make it look good. Not that there aren't expensive lipsticks that look like that, but that's kind of what I'm saying. The fact that it's cheap shouldn't mean anything. It should just be good anyway. Um, but yeah, not impressed with that one. I have got um, a 30 days, 30 lips in 30 days series running on my blog. If you're interested in lipsticks, there's a lot going on on my blog right now. I have a new lipstick every day and a new um, lipstick or non-lipstick post going up every day. It's been a, a big blogging month in June for me. Um, but that's going to be one coming up at the end of the month. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little haul. Hopefully this is a shorter video than normal. I'm trying to kind of give you a, a bit of a, a mixture so that you don't have to sit through 15 minute videos all the time. Um, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any of your own thoughts about any of the products that I bought or any recommendations of things that you think I should try, let me know. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for Style Any Size.